Hey everybody, today I'm counting down my top 10 set collection board games. Now, set collection is a pretty simple uh, mechanism to understand where you're trying to acquire more and more cards or tokens or um, you know, tiles of a certain type to amplify your scoring. So normally every time you get an additional um, card or whatever of that set, you're gonna get more and more and more points and um, score for them at the end of the game. Now, I think set collection is a mechanism that kind of transcends complexity. I think there are very simple games that use set collection well, up to very complex and um, you know, involved games that um, use the set collection mechanism. So my list here is uh, quite a range of very light introductory games to uh, more involved, um, heavier games. So I hope there's something on here that piques your interest and um, I'll get started at number 10. So at number 10 is um, an extremely light game with Age of War. Now Age of War is a Yahtzee style dice rolling game by Rainer Knizia where you have a bunch of seven dice and you are rolling them in each of your turns trying to claim a castle um, or a castle in the center of the table and all the players are going to be trying to fight after, over these castles but not only do the castles themselves score you, um, score you victory points but for, by collecting different sets of those cards, um, you're going to score more victory points. And when you do collect the whole set, you are going to flip them face down um, and they can no longer be claimed by other players. Because not only in this game are you trying to roll to claim the um, cards in the middle of the table, once players have already claimed them, you can actually try and um, win them off those players by rolling an additional symbol. So um, I said it's a Yahtzee style game where you're going to roll the dice, you're going to try and match these different battle lines and if every time you can't match one you remove a dice so the tension ramps and ramps up and you're just trying to get lucky with your dice rolls. But it's a lot of fun, very light and um, a great introductory game that uses set collection well. So at number 9 I have um, a relatively uh, unknown game with Mammoth. Now Mammoth is, I, I believe it was Queen Games who published this one. But it didn't get a lot of fanfare at all. I think it's fairly low ranked, but the game actually works really well. So um, it has a very unique feel to it as well, where you get a bunch of these different tiles and tokens um, in the middle of the table. And on a player's turn, they're going to literally take as many of those kind of tokens as they want. And all those tokens are going to score in different ways and, you know, different kind of having sets of them or um, just having pure points for each one. Um, at the end of the game, you're trying to collect sets of these animals as well, which score you points at the end. But when you take one of these bunch of tokens um, in front of you, other players can either take from the center like you have, or they can take your pile in front of them, and but remove one of those tokens and put them into the center. And that's gonna continue until every person is happy with their kind of, their hoard of different tokens they've taken. But just the way the different sets collect together or, or synergize is very interesting. You know, you're trying to get those end game points, you're trying to score the points for now, you're trying to get the, um, sets of cards to, so you don't have to suffer negative points you're trying to get this set so that you can move further than um, the other players around the kind of the track so that you um, score more points that way so yeah there's a lots of different things going on but again it's very unique and um, has a nice family weight to it as well um, and yeah it's a lot of fun and it's um, pretty quick and engaging so that is Mammoth at number nine um, at number eight I have a Abyss. Now, uh, Abyss is not only an absolutely stunning looking game, um, I think it's Bruno Cathala who, in, who um, designed this one. It's um, a pretty interesting game that uses pushy luck and set collection. So uh, throughout the game, you're trying to collect all these different cards, and then you're going to trade those cards in to collect these different noble, noble kind of um, cards that give you they give you set collection bonuses, or give, sorry, they give you powers, and then eventually when you get certain cards of different types, um, you're gonna get these kind of location um, tiles, and they're gonna give you points based on set collection. And there's lots of different things that they can score you on, because all the different kind of nobles have different suits. Um, you're gonna score points for lots of different things. So you can kind of use these um, locations to amplify your scoring. You can really focus on just get, getting the, the nobles. Um, but I just love the way that everything comes together. It flows nicely. Um, artwork is out of this world. The production is really good. Um, it has a nice flow to it. And there's kind of lots of different things to explore in terms of that end game set collection scoring. So that is Abyss at number eight. At number seven, I have Bumuntu. Now, Bumuntu is an abstract game. I think it only came out last year. It's in 2019. Um, WizKids produced this one or published this one. 
So in this one, you have um, a token and a grid of, I believe it's eight by eight um, tiles of all these different animals. And you are trying to collect these different um, animals in sets um, to score victory points based on majorities. But the cool thing about it is when you collect certain types of tiles, um, you can move the different value or the value of those sets or the different animals up or down on the score track, which is gonna either increase or decrease their points they're going to reward you at the end of the game so that's a really interesting concept it's very interactive as you are trying to amplify your sets higher and to push your opponents down you're not quite sure on what they have because um, everybody's got a screen and you can't see what they've got you're also trying to get different um, symbols as well because if you score um, the most of a certain type you score more points or um, a very simple kind of set collection mechanism where you if you have the most kind of mask symbols, you score more and more points. Um, but it's got a very nice flow to it. All the different tiles um, act in different ways. So they kind of dictate how you can navigate your your pawn around that, um, that, that eight by eight grid and pick up different tiles that way. But yeah, a really fun game. It's quick. It, again, another family weight style game, um, but the set collection is really strong. And um, I think what gives it the X factor is that um, is the way that the scoring board can be manipulated. So number seven is Boomuntu. At number six, I have a very popular small card game with Coloretto. Now Coloretto is a pushy luck style game where you are trying to collect sets of these different chameleons. And at the end of the game, you're gonna score points for three of your most numerous types of chameleons. But the trick to this is that every set you collect uh, or every color lizard you collect above those um, or in addition to those three that you're scoring for, it's gonna score you negative points um, in the same fashion. So you've gotta be very careful about when you're going to um, take a certain column of lizards um, because not only do you want to kind of Get, what you, or get as much as you can, you wanna try and reduce um, the amount of cards you're taking in addition to your three, because as I said, they're gonna score you negative points. Turns are very simple, you're just gonna play, choose, either choose to play a card to a column, or you're going to choose to take a column of cards. Um, and the, the press you like is interesting that, because sometimes you've got kind of a, you know, a, a, an easy kind of set to just add to one of your additional ones, but do you wanna press for more? But every time you do, you're kind of handing it over to your opponent to, you know, you could be helping them. And again, they, they could either be trying to shaft you and, or helping you at the same time. And it's just a great back and forth. And um, it's a lot of fun, but very light. And um, one that I'd highly recommend to anybody. That is Coloretto. Uh, at number five, um, possibly the heaviest game, in fact, definitely the heaviest game on this list is Lancaster. Now, Lancaster is a, a pretty involved Euro game that uses worker placement. But not, you know, normally with worker placement games, you're trying to kind of place them down and collect resources to build buildings and stuff. But this one, you are actually trying to um, either boost your kind of knights up, which are your workers. But one of my favorite things about this game is the set collection where when you kind of claim a worker space, you can take a noble tile from, those, from that kind of region and add it to your player board. And what you expect, obviously, for every noble you have, um, you're going to um, score higher and higher multipliers for endgame scoring. But in addition to that scoring, the, the usefulness of those um, nobles is um, extremely powerful during the game because they're going to give you influence cubes, which let you manipulate the um, basically the rules of the game and the scoring of the game as the game develops. So um, I love that kind of dual mechanism of the set collection. You know, are you going to, collect, you know, you're trying to collect the more obviously unique ones to get more points, but also to get the influence to um, to give you more kind of pulling power or more stroke in the um, in the voting phase. So I absolutely love that. It's really really good fun. Um, it's a different type of approach for working place work placement as well because you know when you place things down, you haven't necessarily got that spot. You can be kicked off by stronger knights and people can boost them with their squires. Um, but yeah, in terms of uh, you know I'll keep this in relation to the set collection. Uh, the set collection is very strong. There's a huge tension of getting the nobles you want. Not everybody can get the same one because say in a three player game there'll only be two of each noble out there so you're going to have to um, be pretty cutthroat and to get the nobles that you want so I love the tension of the of the uh, set collection here it's um it's brilliant and just a fantastic game in general that is Lancaster. Uh, at number four I have my second game by Reiner Knizia with Ra. Now Ra is a another pushy luck 
um, game, but this one has um, auction or an auction mechanism to it as well. Um, it's set in ancient Egypt, and basically a player's turn is going to consist of drawing tiles from a bag and placing them on the board. Um, and those tiles are going to score in loads of different set collection mechanism ways, such as um, you know having unique types or um, you collecting all these different monuments for end, end of the game. You're trying to set, collect sets so that you don't have the least of a certain type, which will score you um, negative points. Um, and all these different kind of tried and tested set collection mechanisms, um, which give you points in loads of different ways. Um, the game is a lot of fun. It's extremely engaging. Um, you are, uh, the game is very nuanced because these auctions or the way you acquire these tiles um, are based on a kind of a one or a single bid auction where um, everybody can place one of their bid tokens each round and um, basically the person who triggers the, um, the auction is going to get the last bid which can either kind of, you know, choose to trump the, the person who's already bid or basically let them have it. So it's a game, a very kind of, uh, you know, it's a very nuanced game and you've got to be very careful about when and where you're going to use your um, your bid tokens because you've got to be careful with them um, because if you don't get all your bids in you're going to potentially leave with nothing but if you waste them all on kind of lots that aren't as aren't as good as they could be then you're going to lose that way as well so um, a very clever game and um, the set collection is a huge element to it that is Ra by Rainer Knizia. Um, at number three I have a small box game by Dr. Steve Finn this is Biblios uh, Biblios is a very clever game. Um, again, I suppose it has a, an auction style feel to it. The game is bit, um, divided into two, two phases, um, but the premise of the game is that you're trying to collect sets of cards. Um, and each set has a value assigned to them um, based on, um, on dice. So basically the dice all start with a value of three and throughout the game those values are kind of being manipulated through different cards, you know, being raised up or, or reduced. Um, and whoever's got the most of a certain ha a suit of cards at the end of the game is going to score points based on the, on the value of that dice at the end of the game. But the way you acquire the cards is extremely clever because you are basically drawing a card either to keep for yourself to give your, to your opponents or to put on a face down pile which will be auctioned for later. So you've got to be very careful about um, you know, how you're going to collect these different sets because you, if you really focus on a certain um, suit of cards and say you've got I don't know, an eight value in them and you could you can basically over invest in things because um, it doesn't matter if you win the win the set by eight, you know, an eight difference, or just by one difference. Um, you know, ultimately, if you if you lose that suit, you're going to get nothing. So you've got to be wary about what your opponent's taking because you don't want to be shafted about you know you know as I said, just investing too much in it and getting nothing in return. Um, but sometimes at the end of the game, you're surprised because you have the most of a certain type of suit and you had no idea that you did and you spent the whole game reducing the value of it. So it's a very brilliantly, intricately designed filler game um, where the set, set collection is um, paramount. So everything just synergizes extremely well, the push you luck, the auctioning, and the set collection. And this is a filler game that is pretty much um, head and shoulders above most. And I definitely recommend checking this one out. And I pretty much, I think this is a, a, an essential in most players' um, board game collections. So that is Biblios by Steve Finn. Uh, at number two, I have Colosseum by Rainer Knizia. Uh, not Rainer Knizia, sorry, with uh, by Wolfgang Kramer. Um, Colosseum is um, another auction style game where you are collecting these different tiles, um, basically to make sets of tiles to match these different performance tiles that you can do. And you're trying to acquire all these unique um, different tokens um, to put on these huge shows to score points. Um, but the way you acquire these sets is interesting because you are um, not only are you trying to bid for them and you bid for them in sets of three, there's also a trading and negotiation round as well where you can either trade your tokens for other tokens or um, trade it for money and stuff like that. But it's all about basically you've got a, a tile which has a kind of a criteria of all these different kind of things or props they need to put on those shows such as gladiators or horses or um, lions or chariots. And you are trying to collect all those different sets of tokens to put that show on. And you know, if you're a few short, then you're going to score negative po or a few, um, you know, fewer points than if you'd have the whole set. You can also score um, based on having the most type of a certain animal or stuff. You get bonus points, and it's just a really nice um, introductory weight Euro game 
Um, the negotiation is great fun. The way you acquire the sets is, is great. You're always trying to buy new kind of performances to put on to amplify your points. And um, you've got to be careful about which ones you're getting rid of as well. But yeah, it's all about um, you know accumulating all those different tokens and um, trying to get a pathway to strategize and um, basically get the biggest performance you can possible to score as many points as possible. But yeah, it's a fantastic set collection game. And that is Colosseum. And finally, at number one, I have Museum. Now, Museum is um, it is quintessentially the, the ultimate set collection game. It is what this game is all about, as you are acquiring all these different artifacts from around the world and um, placing them or exhibiting them in your museum. And you've got all these different, um, well, you've basically got four different parts of the world, but in all the different parts of the world are broken down into different kind of cultures. So, you know, in Europe, for example, you've got like the Roman Empire, you've got, um, forgive me, I can't think what other ones go in there now. Um, but yeah, you've got like all the different kind of, you know, Mesopolitan, you've got the Incas, you've got the Aztecs. And you're basically trying to line up all the different artifacts in, in your museum to score more and more and more points. Um, you've got kind of the criteria that you need to meet as a secret objective at the beginning of the game. You've got all these different domains, which all these different artifacts stretch over. So you've got like your military artifacts, you've got your um, like astronomical artifacts, you've got like, um, you know, your nautical and stuff like that. And you're trying to synergize all those different sets to get together to make these huge uh, displays and um, you know, basically s squeeze every point you can out of this game by making these different sets. Um, you're also going to get additional points for filling um, different portions of your museum. So it's all about acquiring cards and there's also that spatial puzzle as well about how you're going to line them out to get as many points as possible. Um, it's a pretty simple game um, as you are I said, as you're acquiring cards and you are choosing to um, exhibit them by paying with other cards, so you've got to be careful about what you're discarding because when you discard cards as well, your opponents have access to um, to buy them off you. So um, there's that very, um, you know, there's that give and take. You've got to be careful about what you're discarding. Um, you, you want to be careful about how much you're spending at all times as well because when you do um, exhibit stuff, you're going to get that many points. And when you get to a certain point on the track, um, the game is going to basically going to be, or the game end is going to be triggered. So you've got to be careful about not spending too much on too many expensive items because you want to get the sets by putting lots of different cheaper items together as well. Um, there's a lot of kind of um, variability you can have for the expansions as well. There's a lot of different modules and stuff you can plug in to, um, to up the complexity. But the, the set collection really does shine through. The theme works very well for all the different artifacts from all the different cultures. The art on this game is out of this world good. Um, and it's just absolutely, um, yeah, it's a gorgeous production. And just the set collection, the theme, the mechanisms, the, the spatial puzzle just come together beautifully. Um, it's a family weight game, so it's not overly complex. Anybody can play it, but there's still enough going on to satisfy, you know, more experienced gamers. So. Um, a brilliant, a brilliant game. And so yeah, that concludes my uh, my top 10 uh, set collection games. Set collection is always something I enjoy in board games, whether it's the main focus or just kind of a, you know, a side mechanism. But yeah, always something I enjoy. So uh, I hope you've enjoyed the list and I hope there's something here that you maybe uh, have piqued your interest. So um, I hope you enjoyed the review. If you have, please hit like and subscribe and check, check out my other videos too. For everyone else, I'll see you next time on Chairman of the Board. Bye.